The second-ranked women's hockey team jumps back into WCHA play this weekend, hosting Minnesota Duluth at Laban Arena. Friday's game starts at 2 p.m., while Sunday is a noon start. Sunday's game will be televised live by Wisconsin Public Television. Head coach Mark Johnson is here. We'll have some opening comments, then take questions. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. I guess uh, my opening comments uh, just sort of reflect maybe on the first half of the season. Uh, a lot of good things came out of it. Uh, a lot of things that uh, you know maybe we didn't anticipate. But uh, I think that the nice thing is, uh, I think as you find out every year, it, it's nice to get a little bit of break. It's nice for the players to go home, uh, get a chance to relax, spend some time with their families, uh, enjoy the holidays. And then I, I think as they come back, uh, especially in our sport here, where it's a two-semester sport, we get to spend about two and a half to three weeks, uh, you know, focusing on hockey, not having to worry about school. And it's a good time uh, to take that next step as far as our growth uh, within our team. And you know, you can see the energy level as the kids come back. Uh, last week, we've had four or five practices now, and as we prepare for Duluth Friday afternoon. Uh, it's like the beginning of the season. There's that little bit, uh, a step in, uh, in their skating, uh, the smiles on their faces. Uh, they're excited to come back and certainly excited to, to start really our second half. And you know, the first three weekends against Duluth, then going up to Bemidji, and then coming back here against North Dakota uh, will get us right up to speed real quickly. Mark, what didn't you anticipate about the first half? Uh, probably the, the shutout streak that uh, that our goaltenders went through. Uh, you know, you never think about uh, being in that position, and then you know, sitting eight or nine uh, games into it, and it, it moves on, and, and ask, answering questions, and having our players uh, dealing with it. Uh, you know, that's something that you know my crystal ball didn't have in it. <laughs> With how well you guys did play in the first half, are there any negatives to having a month break, in essence? Well, it depends what you do. Uh, it gives you time to heal up. And as I mentioned, uh, the positive side of it, especially for our younger players, uh, our, our freshmen, uh, you know, going through finals, getting a chance to go home and, and spending time with their families, uh, that's usually the best part of it. Uh, you know, and then as they come back, it's uh, it's knocking the rust off and, and trying to get up to speed as quick as you can. Uh, and it, it takes uh, you know four or five you know good quality days uh, on the ice and in the weight room, and uh, it's like riding a bike. It, it doesn't take long to get uh, back to where you need to get back to. Now it's uh, our ability to to do it against an opponent, and we'll find that out Friday afternoon. Mark, what was the emotional carryover from your last series, this, the, the one then in the first half? You, you had the unbeaten streak, and it ends. And you're on the road, and it's a tough opponent. Did, did that, is that something that stuck in your players' craws a little bit? Was it a good thing? What, what, how, how would you evaluate uh, that experience? Uh, probably both. It, it, was, uh, it was something that you know, leaves a bad taste in your mouth, uh, you know, especially the first game and having it be our first loss this season. But, the, the learning points and the teaching points that you take away from, okay, why did it happen? And so as, as that game unfolded and as you talk to the team the next morning, you know, here's some things that we need to learn from it. Uh, you know, nobody liked to lose the game, but, you know, the reasons, you know, why did we lose? And, you know, you can point out two or three things and, and see how the team responds. And that's what, uh, and, and our coaching staff looked at it from how are we going to respond to our first loss and come back the next night. And, you know, we played very well. Uh, had 45 plus shots, uh, a lot of quality scoring opportunities. Uh, their goaltender was equal to the task. We actually could have lost the game. They got a power play with a minute and a half to go in the game and had a couple chances. And in a game we played very well, we probably could have lost uh, that second game, one nothing. But we were fortunate enough to, to, you know, win in a shootout, get the extra point, and that's something that you know you can take away from a positive experience uh, that might help us down the road. But. Uh, uh, you know, it, it lingers because, you know, you don't get to play the next weekend. You know, we had to wait, you know, four weeks before we play another game. So it sits in there uh, and you look at it for a period of time. Uh, but I think from a player standpoint and, and certainly the things that we address with our group is how can we learn from it? And that's the most important part of it. And I think we can take some lessons away that will help us as we go down the stretch here.
Mark, uh, this is Ernie Gards to Annie Pankowski. Does she have, there seems to be a little bit of, of several of her predecessors in her game a little bit. You clearly see some Hillary Knight in her. You clearly see some, a little bit of Megan Duggan in her. Is, is that, is, are those comparisons fair? Do you see the same things or is, are these eyes bad? Well, you don't have your glasses on, so they probably are bad right now. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, those are fair points, uh, you know, as you look at her and, and the more you watch her, you know, what makes her special, why is she, you know, you know, able to score, why is she able to uh, do some of the things. I think uh, one of the common denominators uh, amongst all the players that you mentioned is that inner drive. And, uh, you know, she's got big goals. She has, uh, you know, things that she wants to accomplish here at Wisconsin and, and certainly with the national team. And, uh, trying to make the next Olympic team. And so I think uh, in the back of her mind, those are things that pushes her on a daily basis. And if you look at some of the elite players and the players that have excelled uh, out of our program at the national level with the Olymp different Olympic teams, uh, you know, they had big goals. Uh, they, uh, they went about their business on a, on a daily uh, regiment. And, uh, you know, over the course of time, a lot of them got the chance to fulfill those goals. And, you know, I see a lot of those things that you mentioned in Annie, you know, wanting to push herself. She just got back from camp uh, uh, late uh, Sunday night. And, uh, again, a learning opportunity. Uh, last year got a chance to play in the Worlds. Uh, you talked to some of our players early on in the year uh, when we were in, you know, September camp. Uh, they all noticed a difference in her. Wow, she, you know, she looks good. She looks really good. And so she's having another fine season, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, she'll finish strong, uh, get a chance to play in the Worlds again this spring, and continue to grow. What did you learn from uh, Duluth and their new coaching staff and the first experience you had with them uh, a couple months back? Well, I think, uh, you know, as the season uh, started to unfold, uh, you know, and you look at their competition, their games, their footage, uh, they started to get more comfortable within what, uh, you know, their new system was going to be. Uh, you know, Shannon left her, you know, some skilled players, you know, back on the blue line. Uh, she left, uh, you know, a good goaltender. Uh, they brought in a young goaltender that's played uh, very well for them. So, uh, you know, their staff has had some, you know, some ingredients to work with, and I think they've done a real nice job. Uh, I don't think uh, their head coach is, uh, you know, going to be here this weekend. She's part of the under-18 world team that's going uh, to be competing up in St. Catharines. And so, uh, again, as time goes on and, and they practice more and they play more games, uh, you know, their, their players are going to get more comfortable with the coaching staff. But I was, uh, I was very impressed when I was up there early on, and, you know, they're coming off a couple of games uh, before Christmas down at Ohio State that they, they, you know, they came away with two victories. And if you've ever been down there and played in, in their barn, it's, it's a tough place to win. Uh, it's a small rink and uh, it requires, uh, you know, some things uh, prior to going in there to prepare yourself for. But, you know, they came away with two wins. And so I'm sure they felt good at going into Christmas break and an opportunity for come down here to, to get their second half started. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks. Thanks, Mark.